everybody, so a new review for you guys today. We're talking about the upcoming final chapter in the Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy, Kingdom. I'm very excited to get back into talking about the War for Cybertron Trilogy because the way that we left things off in Siege, things are really starting to heat up. As the Autobots and Decepticons have finally landed on Earth and are met by the Maximals and the Predacons. So the Autobots join forces with the Maximals and the Predacons join forces with the Decepticons. So the final battle to decide the fate of Cybertron ensues. This being the final chapter in the trilogy, the stakes are at an all-time high as both sides are just racing to get to the Allspark. You definitely feel the sense of urgency and desperation setting in from both sides as the war is getting closer to the end, which does add a lot of tension to these six episodes and makes for some really great entertaining action sequences. And then you throw in the Maximals and the Predacons in the mix and that's just awesome as a fan of Transformers. I do have a little bit of a bias because I did grow up watching Beast Wars, so I do definitely have that nostalgia aspect to it, but I do think they were actually a solid addition to this trilogy. Just seeing the Autobots, Maximals, Decepticons, and Predacons just interact with each other is just exciting as a Transformers fan. And basically all the main players are here from the Beast Wars television show and they all have their classic look. The only one that was like sadly missing I guess depending on how you feel about the character is Waspinator. I was kind of surprised that he wasn't included, but I know he has some detractors, so it is what it is. But it was kind of disappointing that Waspinator wasn't involved in some way. The way that the Maximals and the Predacons are integrated into the story is an interesting one, as there is a lot of time travel logic at play here in Kingdom. A little bit more than we had in the previous installments in the trilogy. Kingdom's storyline is very simple and straightforward in that the Autobots and Decepticons are on a race to get to the Allspark on this planet, but they do throw in a lot more of the time travel stuff, as I mentioned, and some of the logic is kind of confusing if you're not following along real closely when it comes to how the Maximals and Predacons are around and like different timelines and also just the stuff that they have with the golden disc that Megatron has that gives him a really big advantage in the fights because he can kind of like see into the future events of what's going to happen. Out of the three chapters in the War for Cybertron trilogy I definitely do think that Kingdom has the most overall fun and exciting spectacle when it comes to the action sequences. It is of course also just awesome because you're seeing all of these characters come together. The Autobots, Predacons, Decepticons, Maximals, they're all fighting each other and then throwing some other special other Transformers along the way. I mean, it's just great to see. Like I said, if you're a big fan of the franchise, stuff like this is very exciting for you to watch. Even with all this amazing action spectacle, Kingdom also does a great job when it comes to delivering on some solid emotionally resonant sequences, as we do sit and reflect a lot on past events that we've seen transpire in the trilogy, and it kind of just shows us just how far these characters have come along on this journey, and all the sacrifices that we've seen come along the way. It's unfortunate because I have brought this up before, it's one of those things that's always just bothered me about this show, and it's the voice cast. I've kind of grown accustomed to the voices for the majority of the Autobots and Decepticons, but the voice cast that they got for the Maximals and the Predacons is just pretty rough all around, unfortunately. I wasn't expecting them to bring back the cast of the Beast Wars show, like Scott McNeil, Gary Chalk, David Kay. So I do commend them for at least kind of attempting to do these characters, but I really don't feel like the voices really suited these characters in this interpretation. It's just one of those big frustrating things about this trilogy as a whole is the fact that they didn't cast like a Peter Cullen, a Frank Welker, or any of the Beast Wars cast, because I do think if they did have the voices for this trilogy, it would have really elevated the material even more because they are such fantastic and iconic voices to the franchise. One that got it the worst, absolutely, 100%, is the Predacon version of Megatron. He's just disappointing all around in this trilogy because he's such a great character in the Beast Wars show, and he's really just like a supporting character. He doesn't have like that intimidating quality to him because he kind of just plays like second or third fiddle to Galvatron and also Megatron, so he's not really scary or intimidating whatsoever. If I had to pick Maximals and Predacons that I think that were done justice when it comes to this material in the trilogy, I do think that Black Arachnia had some really fun elements because she's kind of working with Starscream kind of adjacent to all the main storyline going on. And also a lot of the stuff that they do with Dinobot, of course it is kind of akin to what we saw in the Beast Wars show, but I do think that he was flushed out really well in all the scenes that he did have in this part of the trilogy. Even outside of the Maxwells and the Predacons, there are a lot of other fun character appearances that if you're a fan of the Transformers franchise, you're going to be very excited about. They did show in the trailer that Nemesis Prime does show up in this, so that's obviously one of them. Even if he's not a main factor in the overall story, there are a few other fun surprises along the way that I will not spoil for you if you do check out the show when it hits Netflix. Yeah, overall, I definitely think that Kingdom is a solid wrap-up to the War for Cybertron trilogy. It delivers more of what we've expected from the first two installments, but I think it does give us a really solid wrap-up. Although, with the way that things are left off, I definitely could see us returning to this franchise somewhat in the near future, because that final scene, it's very ominous, yet kind of exciting for what we could potentially have in the future of this series. But those are just my thoughts on Transformers War for Cybertron trilogy Kingdom. It comes out on Netflix July 29th, so if you do get a chance to check it out, let me know in the comments down below. What did you think of the series? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Are you looking forward to potentially more Transformers stuff in the future? Do you think they should continue on with these people involved? Or do you think we should move on and do some other stuff as well? And also, what is your favorite among these three installments in the trilogy? Did you like Siege more? Did you like Earthrise more? Or did you like Kingdom more? Either way, share your thoughts down below because part of the fun of this is having that discussion with you guys down below in the comments section. I like to about all these movie TV with you guys on the channel. Thank you for always sharing my reviews. Though. I really appreciate it. Make sure to like it, the subscribe button. We'll keep it moving, share actions, unboxings, and more on the channel. But next time, I'll see you guys later.